بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد So last lesson بحمد الله we completed lesson 27 and now we move on to the next lesson الدرس الثامن والعشرون lesson 28 This lesson is going to be the final lesson where we speak about the معتل verbs If you remember we mentioned that the verbs in the Arabic language are divided into two main categories in terms of the root letters being free from huruf illa or them containing huruf illa. If the root letters are free from huruf illa, then they are known as sahih. And if there is a harf illa within the root letters, then it is mu'tal. mu'tal. And this is what we were speaking about in the previous lessons. So if the harf illa is found in the fa'ul kalima, the first root letter, it's going to be called Mithal, and this was the topic of lesson 26. And if the Ainul Kalima is where the Harf Illa exists, it's going to be called Ajwaf, and this was the main focus of lesson 27, the lesson that we just completed. And if the Harf Illa is found on the Lamul Kalima, the verb is going to be known as a Naqis verb, and this is the focus of lesson 28. So in this lesson, inshallah, we're going to cover the rules related to the naqis verbs. We're going to begin by mentioning five general rules related to the naqis verbs. So the naqis verb, as we've mentioned, is called mu'tal al-lam or naqis. This is where the lamul kalima fa'ain lam, the lamul kalima is a harf illa. So the first general rule says the lamul kalima may be alif, waw, or ya. All three huruf illa may appear as the lamul kalima. The examples of alif, we have da'a and masha, waw, rahuwa, ya, radiya. And with alif, we have two examples because the alif is written in two different ways. Alif, a long alif, and an alif that looks like a ya. Masha, da'a, rahuwa, radiya. So all three huruf illa may appear on the lamul kalima. However, with the alifs, da'a and masha, any time you see alif, as we mentioned with the rules with the ajwaf, that alif is never going to be a root letter. So it's always going to be additional or munqaliba. Here we're saying it's munqaliba, not additional because it's coming in the place of the lamul kalima. Whenever it comes in the place of a root letter, it's going to be munqaliba. Munqaliba means it was originally a waw or ya that was changed into an alif. It was changed into alif after being waw or ya. Why was the wow and why was the ya changed into an alif? Because of the rule that we mentioned previously. If the harf illa is mutaharrik and it's preceded by a fatha, this wow or ya, this harf illa which is mutaharrik is going to be changed into an alif. And the alif is either going to be written like this or like this. Two ways of writing the alif. طيب. Why doesn't this rule apply with this one? Why wasn't the wow and the ya here changed into an alif? Because the two conditions together have to be applied for the rule to apply. But here we see only one condition applies or one uh, of those conditions is met. The wow, which is a harf illa, the ya, which is a harf illa, is mutaharrik. Okay, so it's mutaharrik. That condition has been fulfilled. However, the second condition is that it has to be preceded by fatha. Here it's not preceded by fatha. Here it's not preceded by fatha. That's why it doesn't get changed into an alif. However, here, da'a was originally da'awa. The wow had a harf illa and it's preceded by fatha. It gets changed into an alif. Masha was originally masha ya. The ya has a um, haraka, is mutaharrik, and then later before it has a fatha, so it gets changed into an alif. So in these two cases, the wow and the ya respectively have been changed into an alif because this rule applies. The two conditions were met. The harf illa was mutaharrik, and the letter before it had a fatha, so it was changed into an alif. So rule number one states that we are able to see all three possibilities coming as harf illa. One, uh, alif, wa, ya coming as the lamul kalima in the verb. So the naqis, we have three types. Except with the alif, it's munqaliba. Important to know that it's munqaliba, it was either a wa or ya. Tayyib, how do we know that it was a wow, and how do we know that it was a ya? Yeah? Is there a rule to differentiate between the origin of the alif? Yes, there is a rule. The way the alifs are written, they indicate to you the origin. So, rule number two says, if we see the alif written like this, a long alif, 
that means it was originally a wow. The lam al kalima was originally a wow. We see this, it means that it was originally a wow. And if we see it written like this, like a ya, the alif is written like a ya, that means it was originally a ya. So this is the rule to differentiate between the two. So we know this alif was originally a wow, and we know this alif was originally a ya, because of rule number two. Let's look at some examples here. Da uh, the origin of the alif it was a wow. Why? Because it's written like this. Written like this, wow. Da uh, this was originally da wa. Naha this was originally nahawa. This was originally a wow. Rama this was originally a ya. Rama ya because it's written like this. Gaza Gazawa. Sa'a Sa'aya. Kawa Kawaya. This was originally a ya. So these ones that look like a ya were originally a ya. And the long alif originally a wow. Tayyib. So this is only in the Madi Thulathi. Thulathi Madi. Thulathi Madi. So look at this one. This is originally a wow, we said. If we take this and transfer it into the mudari' form, it's going to be written like this. Even though it was originally a wow, we said it's supposed to be written like this. But because it's not madi no more, even though it's still thulathi, it's not madi no more, it's mudari' now. It's going to be written like this. So every in every case outside of madi thulathi, whether it was originally a wow or ya, it's always going to be written like this, in this form. In this form. The alif is always going to be written in this form. So the alif is only found in the madi thulathi if it was originally a wow. If the alif was or if the alif goes back to being a wow, you see it written like this only in the madi thulathi. Every other case is going to be written like this. So if da'a, if we change it into ruba'i khumasi sudasi, put it on the sudasi scale, istad'a is originally istaf'ala. So the alif was originally a wow. But it's going to be written like this. Why? Because it's not Maldi Thulathi. So in the Maldi Thulathi, if the Alif was originally a wow, that's when you're going to see it written like this. Only. Faqat. Every other case is going to be written like this. This is important to bear in mind, especially with the Maldi, especially with the Maldi, because we're going to see that the Alif goes back to its original state. So knowing its original state and how to differentiate between the two is important when you're conjugating. So that's rule number two. Rule number two is with regards to the Maldi Thulathi, there is a rule to differentiate between the Alif, the origin of the Alif. If the Alif is written like this, it was originally a Wow. If the Alif is written like this, it was originally a Ya. This rule only applies Maldi Thulathi. Every other case, it's going to be written like a, like this. It's always going to be written like this. Tamam. Rule number three. When a visible Damir, when a visible Damir, so we're talking about Damir Muttasil, the ones that come as fa'il, the mere raf'a. When these damirs come, why did we say visible? To exclude huwa and here. Because huwa and here, like if you say dhahaba, where is the fa'il? Damir mustatir. It's not visible, it's a hidden damir. So we're talking about all of the damir mutasil that are visible. But when the visible damir attaches directly, the alif goes back to its origin. So the ones that have alif, these ones, the ones that have alif, the focus is on these ones. If a visible damir attaches when you're conjugating anywhere in the maldi, the mudari, if a visible damir comes after this alif, it's going to return back to its origin. So this is going to go back to being a wow. And this is going to go back to being a ya. So remember, it's visible damir and, and attaches directly. Those are the two things that we need to highlight. The, the damir has to be a visible one. So this excludes who and here. And it has to attach directly onto the fi'l. So this excludes like where there's a ta in between. So this alif is a visible damir. It is not ad attaching directly to the fi'l because there's a ta in between. Tayyib. Okay. So if the visible damir attaches directly onto the fi'l, the alif goes back to its origin. So we have two examples, da'a and masha. We know this was a wow. We know this was a ya. How do you know that? Because of the way it's written from rule number two. So da'a, we bring alif, al ithnain which is a visible damir that's attaching. So the, what happened to the alif? It went back to its original state. So da'a becomes da'awa. While jama attach, it becomes da'awu. Here, there's no visible damir that's attached, so the alif remains how it is. Da'at. Here, it hasn't attached directly, so it remains. Da'ata. Here, the wow goes back to its, the alif goes back to its origin because noon 
is a visible dhamir has attached and it's going to be da'awna da'awta da'awtuma da'awtum da'awtu da'awtun until the end so here it says if it's a visible dhamir that's attaching directly onto the fi'l the alif goes back to its origin whether it was a wow or ya so here it was a wow so we see wow here it hasn't there's no visible dhamir that's attached so it remains alif here the visible dhamir is there but it hasn't attached directly so it remains طيب. so that's with wow with ya masha was originally a ya so here masha remains masha because there's no visible dhamir that's attached but when the visible dhamir such as wow uh, alif wow and uh, noon attached directly the alif changes into a ya so it becomes masha masha ya masha you masha tia there's it remains here it remains it hasn't attached directly here it becomes mashaina طيب. this is to demonstrate this rule but there's going to be some changes that we're going to explain later on it doesn't remain like this there's some changes that we need to explain later on so this applies in the madi and in the mudari so in the mudari we have yanha yanha is the mudari of naha yanha to go in a certain direction طيب. yanha when a visible dhamir attaches to it it goes back to its origin the origin of this is wow according to the maudi but because of the way it's written it's written like a ya it's going to turn into a ya always it turns into a ya likewise with this one as well is tada'a when a visible dhamir attaches it's going to be turned into a ya even though its origin was a wow its origin was a wow but it's going to be written like a ya because it it's it's in, in every case where it's outside of maudi thulathi it's always going to be taken back to a ya because it's written like a ya it goes back to being a ya but if it's writ written like this that's when we know this is we change it to an a wow this one is changed to a wow every other one is going to be changed into a ya i hope that's that, that, that that's clear so even though we say it goes back to its origin this is in the thulathi you consider the origin if it was written like this it goes back to a wow if it's written like this it goes to a ya every other case origin basically means how it's written this is going to be going back to a ya yanha this is the mudari yanha yanhayani yanhayuna yanhayna the ya because of noon tanhayina the ya because of ya al munnath al mukhataba so i haven't done the full conjugation of the mudari just samples to show you that this rule applies in the madi and the mudari where you have alif the alif is going to go back to its origin if a visible dhamir attaches directly onto it and when we say origin aside of madi thulathi it's always going to go back to a ya it's always going back to a ya the same way it's written as we said every other time aside from madi thulathi is going to be written like a ya likewise when you're doing the conjugation and the dhamir baris attaches directly onto it it's going to go back to a ya so that's rule number three and it's a general rule applies in the madi and in the mudari rule number four speaks about the dhamma and the kasra generally dhamma and kasra are heavy they are heavy upon the tongue they're heavy to pronounce they're thaqila if you are describing two at the same time say thaqilatan both of them are heavy and they are especially heavy when you are burdening a harf illa to carry them because harf illa they are already weak so whenever we see a dhamma on a wow or a kasra on a wow or a dhamma on a ya or a kasra on a ya we're not mentioning alif because alif is never going to be mutaharrik it doesn't carry any vowels it's always sakin so that's why alif is not mentioned here because alif is always sakin so we're remaining with two huruf illa so ya dhamma kasra dhamma and kasra on wow is too difficult so you will find that they remove the dhamma and they remove the kasra in some of the conjugations they take it off whereas fatha is light khafifa fatha is light so if you see ya having a fatha or wa having a fatha they don't make any changes because it's easy to say ya wa but say ye and you and wu and we they find that difficult so just bear that in mind because some of the conjugations you're going to see the dhamma is removed the ya kasra is removed on the ya and the dhamma is removed and the kasra is removed on the wa why because it's difficult that's rule number 4 rule number 5 and this is the final general rule speaks about wa and ya with wow if it's preceded by kasra and we have ew ew any letter that comes before wow and it has a kasra this is difficult it's too difficult to pronounce and likewise when ya is preceded by a dhamma it's too difficult to pronounce these two combinations are difficult and these two combinations are difficult but fatha 
if you have a fatha or dhamma actually if you, if you have a fatha or dhamma before wow or fatha or kasra before a ya that's okay so fatha applies to both but ya the most suitable haraka for for ya is kasra and the most suitable haraka for wow is dhamma so fatha is 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 easy طيب you can have fatha before ya and a fatha before wow but you can't have a dhamma before ya and you can't have a kasra before a wow it's difficult this combination is difficult and this combination is difficult that's rule number five so when you see this you're going to see there's changes that take place because of this difficulty and because of this difficulty there's changes that apply maybe the haraka is going to be changed into one which is more suitable such as a kasra and if you see this maybe the haraka is going to be changed into one which is more suitable such as a dhamma but if you see fatha before it there's no changes that needs to be made because it's light so that's Rule number five. Five rules in total. To summarize, with rule number one, we said you have alif, waw, and ya, all possibilities of the huruf illa coming as lam al kalima. But with the alif, it's going to be munqaliba. It was originally a waw or ya. It was turned into an alif because of the rule mutaharrik preceded by fatha. Then we said in the madi thulathi, the alif is written in two ways. If it was originally a waw, it's going to be written like a long alif. And if it was originally a ya, it's going to be written like a alif that looks like a ya. And this rule only applies in the madi thulathi. Outside of madi thulathi, is always going to be written like a ya. The alif is always looking like a ya. And even in the conjugation, when you return it back to its origin, you return it back to a ya. The only time you return it back to a wow is if it's written like a alif like that. The third rule is when a visible damir attaches directly onto the fail when you're conjugating, the alif... This is a rule specific for the alif. The alif is going to return back to its origin. So if it was written like this, it goes back to a wow. If it's written like this, it's going to go back to a ya. The damir has to attach directly. So here it hasn't attached directly. And here there is no damir. Baris. There is a damir, but it's not baris. It's not visible. It's invisible. Here and hua are invisible. Tayyib. And this applies in the madi and the mudari. The fourth rule is regards to the haraka dhamma and kasra on wow and ya. The huruf illa wa wa ya, it's difficult to have dhamma and kasra, so there's changes that, that are made. And likewise, the wa and the ya, if they are preceded with a kasra and dhamma respectively, there's changes that have to be made because it's difficult. Now we can go to the specific rules regarding the madi, the mudari, and the amr. Tayyib. So we go to the madi first. With the madi, to understand the changes that take place with the madi, you need to concentrate on these four, these four verbs. If you know how to conjugate these four verbs, then you've understood the naqis, thulathi madi. The verbs are da'a, masha, rahuwa, radiya. With da'a and masha, they are on fa'ala. With rahuwa, it's on fa'ula. And the radia is on fa'ila. So all of the possible changes are included within these verbs. So let's look at the changes. So with da'a, what was it originally? We know that it was da'awa. Da'awa. How did we know it was da'awa? Because the alif is written like this. This is madi, thulathi. The alif is written like this to show that it was originally a wow. So this is da'awa fa'ala. We've taken it from da'awa. We've changed it to da'a and written it like this. That's the only change that we need to mention regarding that. With this one now, and this one, and this one, why is there wow? Da'a, why did it change into a wow? Because of rule number three. We said rule number three, when a damir baris attaches directly onto the, the, yani the, the, the naqis verb, whether it's imadi or mudari, the alif will change into its origin. This alif was originally a wow, we said. So that's why we have wow. That's why we have wow. Tayyib. So da'a, Da'awa. Here there's no changes. Da'a, da'awa, no changes. But with da'awu, now rule number four. What did we say rule number four? We said the dhamma and kasra on wow is difficult. So what's going to happen? This dhamma, da'awu, the dhamma on the wow is omitted. Because it's difficult to pronounce. Because the dhamma has been omitted, that means we have iltiqa'u sakinain. This is sakin. When you omit a vowel, that means it's vowelless. So this is vowelless and this is vowelless. Two sukuns meeting is difficult for the Arabs to pronounce. It's impossible. So what happens? We need this. This is wawul jama'ah. 
This is wa'ud jama'ah. This indicates who the doers are. So this is indispensable. We can't take it off. So what happens is the harf illa now is going to be omitted. After omitting the dhamma because of difficulty, we omit the wa'ud because of iltiqa'u sakinin. It becomes da'aw. So da'a, da'awa, da'aw. How do we get to da'aw? The dhamma was omitted because it's difficult. Then there was iltiqa'u sakinin. Then the wa was omitted because of iltiqa'u sakinin. It becomes da'aw. Da'aw. They, group of males, made dua. We move on to the next one now. Da'at. Here, you can already see there's something wrong. Because the alif is sakin, vowelless. The ta is vowelless. So there's iltiqa'u sakinin. The ta is indispensable. We can't remove it because it indicates that the fa'il is mu'annath. We need it. So we're going to remove the alif. So it becomes da'at. It becomes da'at. And likewise, here, oh, I've already made the change. I wasn't supposed to write it like this. I was supposed to write it like this. Da'ata. This alif was omitted or, or from here. It's taken from here anyways. Tayyib. So labas. So this da'at and this is da'ata. Da'ata. Because this is taken from this by just adding alif. So da'at, da'ata. In da'awna, there's no change. The only change is because noon is damir bariz. It's a visible damir that's attached. The alif change into a wa with a sukun. And then this is going to be the same. Da'awna, da'awta, da'awtuma, da'awtum, da'awti, da'awtuma, da'awtunna, da'awtu, da'awna. Remains the same until the end. That's why I didn't write anything else because it's going to be the same. So once again, da'a was originally da'awa. We know it was da'awa because of the alif being written like this. That's rule number two. When the alif is written like this in the Madhi Thulathi, we know it was originally a wow. So da'awa became da'a. Why? Because the harf illa wa was mutaharrik preceded by a fatha, so it becomes an alif. And the alif is written like this. And then we mentioned rule number three. Whenever the damir bar is attached directly, the alif goes back to its origin. So that's why it goes back to being a wow. That's why it went back to being a wow. That's why it went back to being a wow. That's why here it didn't go back to being a wow because it's not attaching directly. It's not attaching directly. So here, Alhamdulillah, we should understand that we just change it into a wow. Nothing else applies. Here, after having changed it into a wow, we apply rule number four. Rule number four says, Dhamma on wow is heavy. So it was removed. Then there's iltiqaw sakin, so we remove the wow and it becomes da'aw. We move on to the next one now, masha. Masha, remember that the alif here was originally ayah, mashaya. How do you know it was mashaya? Because of the way the alif is written. The way the alif is written indicates to me that this was originally mashaya. I need to know that because when the damir bar is, the visible damir attach, this is going to go back to that ya. So masha, he walked. Mashaya. Why did it turn to Mashaya? Because Alif, Baris, Damir, which is visible, has attached directly. Mashaya. No changes additional to that. Now, Mashayu. Mashayu. Once again, the rules that we mentioned here apply. Why? Because we said Dhamma on Ya, which was rule number four. Dhamma on Wow and Dhamma on Ya is difficult. So what happens? The Dhamma is removed. Why is the Dhamma removed? Because it's difficult to pronounce the Dhamma on a Harf Illa. The Harf Illa itself is weak and you're making it carry a heavy load. So it's removed. After it's removed, it, this is vowelless, this is vowelless. Iltiqa'u sakinain. So we remove the Ya as well. So it becomes Mashaw. We join the Sheen to the vowel directly and it becomes Mashaw. They walked. Is there any other changes? No. Then we move on to the next one. We said there's an additional rule and that is the alif is going to be omitted when ta or ta neath joins in these two cases. So here I've written in these two cases. So masha ta will be masha ta. The ta joins directly to the sheen. Mashat, masha ta. So the alif is omitted in these two cases. So there's one specific rule. Every other rule is covered in the general rules. But this one is a specific rule for the madi. Mashat, masha ta. And then mashayna. Mashayta, mashaytuma, mashaytum remains the same. Now we move on to rahuwa. Rahuwa, the wow, wasn't an alif. So it was originally a wow. This is not munqaliba. With these two, is munqaliba. So that's why 
we had to mention rule number one and rule number two, knowing that it's munqaliba and knowing its origin. This was a wow, this was a ya, that those first two rules only apply to this one. So with this one, we can work straight from rule number three, begin from rule number three. Even rule number three doesn't really apply because it's it's a wow. It doesn't go back to its origin. So we have rahuwa, 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 rahuwu. Here's rule number four. Rule number four says dhamma on wow is difficult, so the dhamma is omitted. Then there's iltiqaw sakinin, so the wow is omitted. So this becomes rahu. The kha joins directly to the wow. Rahu. Rahu what? Here there's no iltiqaw sakinin. Is there iltiqaw sakinin? There is no iltiqaw sakinin. So, so this remains. So iltiqaw sakinin is only when the lamul kalima is an alif. When the lamul kalima is alif, that's where we remove the alif because of iltiqaw sakin. But here, when it's a waw and when it's a ya, there is no iltiqaw sakin. It has a fatha. Tayyib. So there is no iltiqaw sakin, so it remains. Rahuwat, rahuwata, rahuna, rahuta, rahutuma, rahutum, rahuti, rahutuma, rahutunna, rahutu, rahuna. So there's no extra changes. There's no extra changes. Here, after removing the waw, we see that the letter before the waw al jama is a dhamma. Dhamma, we said dhamma and fatha is okay. Dhamma is the most suitable and fatha is easy. So there's no changes that's required. طيب. We move to the last one now. Radiya. So we are working with the ya now. There's no need to do uh, find out its origin and so on. We can just continue now. Radiya. Radiya. Radiyu. Once again here, we have a dhamma. Dhamma on a ya. That's difficult. It's omitted. Then the ya is vowelless and the wow is vowelless. Iltiqaw sakin. So we remove the ya also. Now we have radiyu. The da joins directly to the wow. It becomes radiyu. Rule number five, we said that if the wow is preceded by a kasra, this combination is too difficult. We can have dhamma. We can have fatha. But we can't have kasra. So what happens with the kasra? This kasra is changed into a dhamma. We change the kasra into a dhamma because that's what's most suitable. So instead of saying radiyu, we say radu. Radu. Tayyib. Then this one remains radiyat, radiyata, radina, radita, radituma, raditum. So with this one, with rahuwa, fa'ula, and fa'ila, the main changes are with the dhamma, when it joins waw al jama'ah. When it joins waw al jama'ah, the dhamma on the waw and the dhamma on the ya is omitted. Then the waw and the ya are omitted because of the taqaw sakinin. Then after omitting the waw and the ya, we need to look at the letter before. Is it one which is suitable? If it's suitable, yani with waw, dhamma or fatha is suitable, so we leave it. But if it's a kasra before the waw, we have to change it into a dhamma. So these are the changes with the madi. Likewise, with the mudari, we have to practice with these three verbs. If you're able to do the tasrif of these three verbs in particular, then you've understood the naqis mudari conjugation. So, yad'u wu is on yaf'ulu, yarmiyu is on yaf'ilu, yardayu is on yaf'alu. So, yaf'ulu, yaf'ilu, yaf'alu. All the three possible combinations. So, this is how we start now. We start with yad'u wu. Yad'u wu becomes yad'u. Why? Because dhamma on wow is difficult. So we omit it. After omitting it, this is vowless. So it becomes yad'u. Likewise, yarmiyu, the dhamma on the ya is difficult, so we omit it. The ya is vowless, so it becomes yarmi. Yardayu. With yardayu, before omitting the dhamma, we apply the other rule. The harf illa is mutaharrik and is preceded by a fatha. So what's going to happen to the harf illa? It becomes an alif. And this is going to be written like this in all cases because it's not Madi Thulathi. Aside from Madi Thulathi, you always write it like this. You don't need to consider its origin. Was it a wow or yeah? You just write it like this. Tayyip, so that rule takes precedence over omitting the Dhamma. So we don't say Yardai. So now we're working with Yad'u, Yarmi, Yarda. Tayyip, we need to apply those general rules once again. We need to apply those general rules once again. So we're going to start with Yaf'ulu. Which is yad'u. So we've already applied the change and got yad'u. So that's that's how it's going to be for all of the ones where there's no attachments. Yad'u, tad'u, tad'u, ad'u, nad'u. So these ones, we should already know how to read them. 
because we once you've applied the change here, it applies to all of these ones. يَدْعُو تَدْعُو أَدْعُو نَدْعُو طيب. So, يَفْعُلُ If you get stuck with يَدْعُو, just do the tasrif of يَخْرُجُ يَخْرُجُ يَفْعُلُ يَخْرُجُ يَخْرُجَانِ يَفْعُلَانِ يَخْرُجُونَ يَفْعُلُونَ طيب. Here there's no changes because we have فتح on the word. Nothing difficult. So يَدْعُوَانِ remains يَدْعُوَانِ يَدْعُو يَدْعُوَانِ يَدْعُوُونَ Now, here, this wow has a dhamma. The dhamma is omitted because it's difficult. Then there's iltiqaw sakinain Because the wow is vowless. And the wow, wow jama' is vowless. So we omit the wow. So this becomes يَدْعُوُونَ Attaches directly onto the wow. So it becomes يَدْعُوُونَ تَدْعُو تَدْعُوَانِ يَدْعُونَ So here we have two which يعني Apparently look exactly the same يَدْعُونَ يَدْعُونَ From what's apparent But in terms of the scale If you was to If someone asks you What scale is this on What scale is this on That's where you can differentiate between the two So let's let's scale it So now remember we've lost the لَامُ kalima Because we've lost the لَامُ kalima In the word that we're weighing We have to lose the لَامُ kalima In the scale as well So this is يَفْ يَفْ we have the Ainul Kalima, Yafru, Yafru, but the Lamul Kalima was omitted. Our Wow was the Lamul Kalima, so we're going to omit that as well. So this is Wawul Jama'a, Yafruna. Yaduruna is on Yafruna. How about Yaduruna, this Yaduruna? This is on Yaf, Yafruna. Yaduruna, Yaduruna look exactly the same, but the Wawul here is wow al jama'ah, it's not part of the verb. Whereas the wow here is not wow al jama'ah, it's part of the verb. So that's the lam al kalima, that's why we have yam al kalima here. Yaf'ulna. Here, yaf'una, we don't have the lam al kalima. Taib, so if we continue, we have tad'u, tad'uwani, tad'uwuna. Tad'uwuna, once again, the same changes. The dhamma on the wow is difficult. We remove the dhamma. Then there's iltiqaw sakinain, we remove the wow. So this becomes tad'una. Tad'una. The ayin joins the wow straight away. Tad'una. Same as yad'una, tad'una. So there's going to be a difference between this tad'una and this tad'una once again. This is on taf'una and this is on taf'ulna. Tayyib. So we've completed that much so far. So tad'u, tad'uani, tad'una. Now we're on tad'uina. Kasra. On wow is difficult. So what do we do? We remove the kasra. We remove the kasra. After removing the kasra, the wow is vowless and the ya, the damir, ya al muannath al muhatab is vowless. Iltiqaw sakinin. So we remove the wow. We remove the wow. So it becomes tad ruina. Tad ruina. If we apply rule number five, we have a ya preceded by a dhamma. We said this combination is too difficult. So what happens to the dhamma? It gets changed into a kasra because that's what's most suitable to the ya. So it becomes tad ina. The ain joins to the ya directly after removing the the wow. Tad ina. Then tad uwan is the same. Tad uuna adu wa nadu. So the main changes take place when the wow al jama attaches and the ya al munnatha al muhatab attaches. This is where the most changes are going to take place in the mudari. In the mudari. So. The end result يدعو تدعواني يدعونا تدعو تدعواني يدعونا The two يدعونا Even though they're exactly the same You know the difference in context So يدعونا here means They group of males are making dua يدعونا here means They group of females are making dua Group of males, group of females You won't know the difference in writing You only know the difference when you put it in context And if you are told that wasn't so this if you're told this is yaf'una you know that this is wawul jama'ah and if you're told yaf'una you know that this is not wawul jama'ah but part of the verb because lamul kalima is still there Taib, so that's the first verb yad'u now we move on to yarmi yarmi we said it was yarmiyu we ended up with yarmi so let's do the tasrif of yarmi yarmi means to throw rama yarmi so we have yarmi yarmiyani Yarmiyuna. Once again, remember we said in the mudari, the main focus is when wawul jama'ah attaches, 
in these two places and ya ul muannath al mukhatab attached that's where the changes are going to take place we need to consider those rules that we mentioned so dhamma on ya is difficult so it's removed then there's iltiqaf sakine so the ya is removed so it is yarmiuna yarmiuna rule number 5 said that kasra before wow is difficult this combination is difficult so what do you do with the kasra we change it into a dhamma which is more suitable so it becomes yarmuna tarmi tarmiyani yarmina tarmi tarmiyani tarmiyuna same thing same thing is going to be applied here dhamma on the ya is difficult iltiqaw sakinain so the ya is removed the kasra before wow is difficult so we change it to what's more suitable dhamma so this becomes tarmuna the meme attaches directly onto the wow tarmuna yarmuna same طيب. then we have tarmiyina tarmiyina ya mathal mukhatab this kasra on the ya is difficult so there is going to be iltiqaw sakin after removing the kasra because both are vowelless this causes us to remove the ya tarmina we have a kasra there's no additional changes that's required remember here we had a dhamma before the ya that's that combination is impo impossible and it's very difficult that's why we change it into a kasra but here this is the most suitable letter so we can leave it as it is whereas here it was the opposite here we didn't need to do that here we had to do that so after removing the letter you have to look at the haraka of the letter that is now uh, before the wow and the ya to see if it's suitable if it's not suitable you have to change it but with fatha as we're going to see here with fatha you just leave it in both cases here and here you can leave it but if wow has a kasra you have to change it to a dhamma and if ya has a dhamma you have to change that dhamma into a kasra طيب tarmina tarmiyani tarmina now these two now they look exactly the same just like here we had these two looking exactly the same but when we looked at the patterns we saw that they they're not they, they're not the same here the lamul kalima has been removed here the lamul kalima is still there and the two wows are different wow this one is an additional letter outside of the original letters whereas this one is part of the original letters now we're going to have the same kind of thing here so tarmina the lamul kalima was removed tarmina the lamul kalima is still there the lamul kalima is still there so this ya is part of the verb whereas this ya is ya ul munnath al mukhattab which is additional letter which is something that has come foreign to the original word so if we was to uh, weigh this out this would be taf so that's fa ul kalima ayn ul kalima has a kasra this is not lam ul kalima has been removed so we remove it from the scale and then we add ya and nun so taf'ina this scale tarmina is on taf'ina how about this one this is on taf'il this is lam ul kalima taf'ilna so we have tarmina tarmina but they are on two different scales this is on taf'ina and this is taf'ilna how do you differentiate between the two in, in reading context context Taf tarmina is when you're speaking to a singular female anti tarmina a group of females if you're speaking to a group of females likewise you say tarmina the file is the noon the file here is the ya طيب. now we move on to the final one which is yardayu change into yarda so we're working with yarda so we should already know how we got yarda and thus if we have yarda it applies to all of these ones yarda tarda tarda arda narda طيب. the one with the alif the one with the alif we have to apply rule number three rule number three is when the dhamair al-bariza the visible dhamir is attached directly that alif goes back to its origin here it's going to go back to a ya so that's why the ya appears the ya appears the ya appears when the dhamirs attach directly to it in these ones they don't appear because there's no dhamir that's attached to it all the dhamirs are hidden arda uh, is ana there's no dhamir that's visible narda is not visible tarda is not visible none of them are visible so that's why the alif remains طيب يرضى يرضيان يا came because alif al ithnain join directly to it يرضيان يرضيون the dhamma is difficult remove التقاء ساكنين so remove the ya 
Yardawna. We can leave it now because the wow is preceded by fatha, which is okay. That combination is okay. So yardawna. They are pleased. Yarda, radiya yarda means to be pleased. Yardawna, they are pleased. Tarda, tardayani, yardayna, no changes. Tarda, tardayani, tardayuna. Here, remember with the mudari, naqis, it's wawul jama'ah and yawul manath al mukhatib. When these two dhammas connect, that's where the changes take place. So we remove the dhamma, then there's going to be taqa sakini, we remove the ya. Then it becomes tardawna. Tayyib. Here, tarda, yina. Tarda yina, the kasra on the ya is too difficult. We remove the kasra, then we remove the ya because of iltiqa sakinain, then it becomes tardayna. Tardayna. So tardayna is going to look exactly the same as this tardayna. But we already know that the scales are different and the meaning are different when it comes to context, although they look exactly the same. So tardayna, tardayani, tardayna, arda, narda. What's the scale of this one? We can say taf aina, taf aina, not taf alna. Because there's no lamul kalima, we just removed it. Taf aina, and this is taf alna. Tayyib, this is a heavy dose, Khwani I hope you're paying attention. Inshallah, once you have yani, understood these changes with these three in particular, then you are good to go with the rest. Anything that comes on this, these patterns, then you know the same changes are going to apply. But the main thing is understanding those five general rules. Understanding those five general rules so far. We haven't left those five general rules The only thing that we've done is we've added one rule with the Mahdi and that is if the Naqis ends with the Alif and then Ta'u Ta'neeth the second adjoins there's Irtiqa Sakinin That's the only additional rule outside of the five general rules that we mentioned So let's move on to the Amr now as for the Amr then we already know that it is taken from the Mudar by applying four steps So we're going to apply those four steps Step number one has already been applied and that is to take it from the mudari' mukhatab. So I've given you the mudari' mukhatab of the three verbs that we were working with in the mudari'. That's step number one. Step number two is we have to remove the harful mudara. After removing the harful mudara, we see that all of these verbs, they begin with a sukun. They all begin with a sukun. So this means we need to apply rule number three, which is to introduce hamzatul wasl. Tayyib, after introducing the hamzatul wasl, we remember that the Hamzatul Wasl has a harakah. It's either going to have a Dhamma or a Kasra. And this depends on the third letter. If you see on the third letter Dhamma, you give it a Dhamma. If you see anything other than Dhamma, you give it a Kasra. So with this one, it's going to have a Dhamma and all of them Dhammas. With this one, it's going to have a Kasra and with this one, it's going to have a Kasra. Tayyip. So we give all of them Dhammas, these ones Kasra and these ones Kasras. So that's rule number three. Rule number four. Now, for the Amr, we need to make it Mabni. If you remember, we mentioned a principle when we first began explaining the Amr. And that principle was the Amr is going to be Mabni on whatever its mudari is Majzoom on. This is very important. This rule is important because it gives you the full picture. If you understand this rule, it gives you the full picture and you are able to apply this rule throughout. With this rule, we have to focus mainly on the Mufrad Mudhakkar, Mufrad Mudhakkar, Mufrad Mudhakkar. That's where there is going to be something new, an additional rule. So we're going to add a specific rule related to the Amr. So, so far we've taken four general rules. One specific rule related to the Mahdi, that was with the Alif, if there's Tau Ta'ni, we remove it. And we're going to mention another specific rule related to the Amr. And that is related to the Fi'l uh, or the Amr for the Mufrad Mudhakkar, Mufrad Mudhakkar. And that's related to how we make it mabni. How we make it mabni. So with the mudari, we have yad'u, we have yarmi, and we have yarda. Three verbs. One ends with a waw, one with a kasra, or ya, one ends with with a, with a alif. طيب. If lam came, and we want to make it majzum, what do we do? So lam is a jazim, it makes it majzum. So with these ones previously, lam yadhab, we give it a sukun. So what do we do with these ones? Do we give it a sukun and say lam yad'u, lam yarmi, lam yarda? If we give it a sukun, what difference is there? There's no difference. Prior to lam coming in, it was already yad'u, yarmi, yarda. So what, what effect did that have? Nothing. Giving a sukun to the end made no difference. So this is why the Arabs, they said, because a sukun does not make any difference because it already had a sukun before the jazim came in. 
what we're going to do instead is make the sign of it be majzum, the removal of the last letter. The harf illa being removed is going to be the sign of it be majzum. So this is going to be yad'u, this is going to be yarmi, this is going to be yarda. So the sign of it majzum for the naqis is removal of the harf illa. The Arabs, whenever they remove something or they hide something, there's always an indication to that thing which was removed. So what's the indication here? The last letter having a dhamma indicates that the wa was removed. Kasra, ya was removed. Fatha, alif was removed. So here we have our signs. Signs of al-jazm. If the word or if the verb is mu'tal al-lam is the removal of the lam al-kalima. Removal of the lam al-kalima and the Ainul kalima, whatever is left, is an indication to that type of uh, harf illa that was removed. So because the naqis is made majzum by removal of the harf illa, it's also going to be mabni on the removal of the harf illa. So the fourth rule, remember we mentioned that the amr is going to be mabni on that which it is majzum on. Whatever it is majzum on, that individual verb, whatever... The sign of it being majzum will be the sign of it being mabni. So, in in applying rule number four to make it mabni, we're going to be make it mabni on removal of the harf illa. Make it mabni on removal of harf illa. Make it mabni on removal of the harf illa. So we end up with udu. You're commanding one male, make dua. That additional rule only applies to the singular mudakkar. Singular mudakkar. Everything else. Is, is is different. Remember this one to make a mabni, we remove the noon. So we have udu and we have irmi and we have irda. Tayyib. So this is where the extra rule applies, the mufrad mudhakkar. And with the rest of them, we remove the noon except this one because the noon is noon al inath. The ones that are from the afal al khamsa, we remove the noon. Tayyib. So now we end up with udu, udu'wa, udu'u. Ud'i. Some of you might be confused with this one. You might say one, two, three, the third letter has a kasra, so the Hamzat Rasa should have a kasra in the Amr. That's the rule that we mentioned. But remember that in the Mudari there were changes. This was originally a Dhamma. Remember this was originally a Dhamma, but it changed into a kasra to make it easy for the Ya to be pronounced. It was Tad'u'ina. When the Ya was removed, Tad'u'ina became Tad'i'ina. Tad'i'ina just for to make it easy to pronounce. So when you are considering the Hamzatul Wasl, the Harakah of the Hamzatul Wasl, always go back to the Mufrad Mudhakkar. That's the easiest way to see which Harakah you need to give it. Because some of these ones, the Harakah has been changed, the third letter has been changed, or if it's been omitted sometimes. So go to the Mufrad Mudhakkar to determine the Harakah of the Hamzatul Wasl. طيب. So we have Ud'i, Ud'uwa, Ud'una, Irmi, Irmiya, Irmu. Likewise here, we have one, two, three, the third letter has a dhamma. So why doesn't this have a dhamma? Why is it same thing? Remember, just go back to this one. They will help you to determine the harakah of the Hamzat al-Wasl. Here, remember, it was changed. It was it was a kasra, the meme was a kasra. But after the, the letter here was omitted, the wow required a dhamma before it because kasra is too difficult. طيب. Irmu. Irmi. Irmiya, Irmina, Irda, Irdaya, Irdaw, Irday, Irdaya, Irdayna. Tayyip, this is our dars for today. I would request for you to do the tasrif of these verbs. I've given you the madi and the mudari. Ghazawa, yaghzu, fa'ala yaf'ulu, mashaya, yamshiyu, fa'ala yaf'ilu, nasiya, yansayu, Fa'ila yaf'alu. Ghaza means to invade, masha to walk, nasiya to forget. So you need to do the tasrif of the madi, the tasrif of the mudari. So I've given you the origin, the original verb. You need to do the changes and uh, do the conjugation of the madi and the mudari and also the amr for each one of these three verbs. And that's what we're going to cover next lesson before we begin reading the passage. بارك الله فيكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك